It's a great joy for us to gather together. We thank you for the people of God here. Lord, I just pray that your blessings will come mightily upon everyone in Jesus' name. Nobody will miss any of the blessings of God. Visit everyone. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. You must give me another good amen before you sit down. May God confirm your prayer. God bless you. You can sit down. What a great meeting we're having. And what a great privilege we have. And today, as you hear the good news, that you will open your heart to God. Open your mouth before the Lord. And say, yes, Lord, I thank you. Because you are sending good news to me. And I'm accepting the good news. And this good news will turn your life around. If you have your Bible, you open with me to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2 verse 7. And she brought forth a firstborn. Wrapped him in swaddling clothes. And laid him in a manger. Because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds. Abiding in the, sh in the field. Keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day. In the city of David. A savior which is Christ the Lord. You see the children of Israel. For a long time they have been carrying yokes upon them. And bodies upon them. And calamities upon their lives. They were crying and nobody could dry their tears. There was sickness. There was poverty. There was curse. There were calamities in their lives. Unfortunate incidents in their lives. Until this time now, they have been, they have been sending their message to heaven. Oh Lord, how long? How long are we going to be in this calamity? In fact, they cried so much that when you gather all their tears together and you gather all their sorrows together and you gather all their suffering together, a whole book is, is, uh, is describing all the calamities. And that book is called A Lamentation of Jeremiah. A Lamentation is just weeping and weeping and weeping. And all that Jeremiah was doing there is to gather all the tears of Israel, all the sorrows of Israel, all the regrets of Israel, all the heartaches of Israel, all the calamities of Israel, living before the Lord. Oh Lord, we are crying. Oh Lord, we are suffering. Oh Lord, look at the reproach. Oh Lord, look at the shame. A lamentation of Israel spoken about by Jeremiah. And then how long will it be? When are we going to be free from all these? And then God remembered in heaven. His covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. That's why he sent Jesus Christ. And this day when Jesus was born. And the people were still crying. They were still lamenting. They were still almost like going to a funeral every day. And they didn't know that something good had happened already. That's when the angel came to announce. And the angel did not come to cathedral. 
And the angel did not go to a temple. He went to a field. All of a sudden there was light from heaven. Light will come in your life today. Freedom will come in your life today. Christ was born already. The solution to every problem had been given already. But nobody knew. They were still crying. They were still lamenting. Not knowing good news at come. The Lord has seen all your tears. The Lord has seen all your sorrows. The Lord has seen all your calamities. Yes, he knows the burden and the mountain you carry. And little did you know that now there is good news coming to you from heaven. And they were told all these people, the shepherds, the angel came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. What they had never seen. If you open your heart, if you open your eyes, and if you will stretch your hand and your mind and your heart unto the Lord here, the glory of the Lord will shine right about you. And darkness will flee away from you. All those problems will be crying about. The glory has come. The solution has come. The power of the Lord coming with his glory has come upon you today. And then he told that angel told them. He said in verse 10, fear not. He said, fear not. Now, if you, if you follow that in your Bible, now how would you tell somebody, fear not? That means the fellow had been afraid. If I say, weep not, it means you are weeping. If I say shout not, it means we are shouting. And it's when, when I say don't do that, it means we are doing it. Now when it says fear not, it means they were fearing already. I'm going to trace that history of fear for you. You see, when God created Adam and Eve, they had authority and power. They were like the king in the garden of Eden. They feared neither object nor any subject. And they did not fear animal. Even the lion, the king of animals, they didn't fear. They were free. Total freedom. They did whatever they wanted to do. They went anywhere they wanted to go. They ate anything they wanted to eat. Until sin came in. And then fear. Adam. Where are you? I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid. That's the beginning of history of fear. There was no fear on earth before sin came in. And so from that time. Until this time that this angel came to Israel. There was fear. When God called Abraham, what did he say? Abraham, fear not. What did God tell Moses? Fear not, rise up, I'm sending you somewhere. What did God tell Joshua? Fear not, be courageous and be of good courage. What did David tell Saul? Fear not, I'll go and confront this Goliath. What did Isa tell the children of Israel? Fear not, I am your God. What did God tell Jeremiah? Fear not, I am with you. What did Jesus tell his own disciples? Fear not. What did God tell Saul when he was on the sea? Fear not, you will not abuse the lives of these people. Fear not, came from Genesis chapter 3 all through the history of man. There is fear in your heart. There is fear in your wife. There is fear in your children. And you know why? Because when sin entered, fear entered. Before I keep on telling you the good news, I must take.
spiritual broom and sweep out the bad news out of your life. And when you hear me mention all those things, I'm sweeping them away in your life. The things that have brought fear in the heart of man. I told you just now, you know it yourself. That in the case of Adam and Eve, they were fearless. They were free. They were bold. Until sin came in. And it was sin that brought that fear upon them. And for all the children, the descendants of Adam and Eve. If you find fear in your heart. You fear in the night. You fear in the day. You fear men. You fear women. You fear babies. You fear old men. You fear animal. You fear the wind blowing. You fear your parents. You fear your friends. You fear everybody. And fear has gripped your heart. And even people, they want you to remain afraid. What has brought this fear? If you have your Bible, it's in Romans chapter 1. Verse 28. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over unto a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Romans chapter 1 verse 29 being filled with all unrighteousness. Fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy. Malig and then it says murderers, debate, Deceit, malignity, whisperers. And you see, hey, that, that is what came out in society. All those things I read to you now. They were not there when God created Adam and Eve. And because they, was, they were not there, there was no fear. There was total freedom. Freedom because that's what God created was there. They were just at ease. They slept, nothing made them afraid. Anywhere they went, anywhere they looked, nothing made them afraid. But disobedience entered into their lives. And over there, if I told you now today, if you have never been afraid in your life since you were born, raise up your hands. You cannot raise up your hand because that fear had come upon everybody on the face of the earth, which is proving to you and to me that you are a sinner because it is a sin that brought the fear. Do angels in heaven fear when Jesus came here? All the days he spent on earth, did he fear? No, not at all. Why not? Angels did not have sin, therefore they could not have fear. And Jesus did not have sin, that therefore he could not fear. Show me a rich man today that is not afraid. Show me a prosperous, wealthy person here today that is not afraid. Show me a psychologist or show me a scientist that is not afraid. Show me an educator that is not afraid. Show me a father, show me a mother that is not afraid. Show me anyone on the face of the earth that has never been afraid since he was born. Show me a white man, show me a black man that has never been afraid since they were born. You know why fear is general and common? Because sin is general and common. And as you look at what I've read to you, if you're a sincere man, if you're a sincere woman, you nod your head and say, yes, I've done that before. Now I know. Now I see. 
why this fear is gripping me every time. When the seed goes out, the fear will go out. And the hand of the devil in your life, I'll knock it off tonight from your life. Uh, but you see, we need to sweep all these things away from our lives. And, and you know, I read it to you from verse 29. And it talks about fornication. And you know, there are people that you don't even like the mention of that word. You know, the preacher takes a spiritual broom in his hand and he wants to sweep away a fornication from your life. And he says, no, 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 preacher, don't touch that area. We have to touch it so you can be free. When you are free from fornication, you are free from fear. When somebody has a child and dumps the child in the gutter, isn't that wickedness? When a man gets so angry and beats his wife almost to death, is that not wickedness? When you meet somebody on the road who has never offended you and you do evil to him, is that not wickedness? When somebody thinks you are a friend and you are a companion and then he comes near you and then you want to hurt him and poison him, is that not wickedness? And then he talks about covetousness. You know, they want their money at all costs. Even if they have to destroy the lives of other people and the prospects of other people and the future of other people to have the money, they want it at all costs. That's sin. That's covetousness. And then he talks of maliciousness. That is, those, uh, there are people, if they have you in their heart, no matter how you make them laugh, how you make them happy, or you give them gifts, that thing you have done to them, maybe you mistakenly did that thing three years ago, it's still in the corner of their heart. They never forgive, they never let you go. They're going to see the time they're going to knock you. It talks of being full of envy. They are jealous. Everybody that has something they don't have, they want to wreck that individual. And then the murderers, those who debate and argue against the word of God. And those who are in deception and lying and hypocrisy. Malignity and whisperers, backbiters, gossipers. Haters of God despiteful, proud. Have you met proud people before? Even when they have nothing. Even when they know nothing. Even when they are failures in life. And you bring good news to them. You know there's some people that are so proud. And they say, no, I don't want that. And these are the sins that bring calamities into our lives. And then it talks of boosters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. The parents have almost given up. Many parents cannot talk to their children anymore. Many parents cannot tell a child, stand up there, sit down there, don't go there, don't go there. The parents, they are fed up. Nobody can talk to these children anymore. Even if they can put two grammar words together, and then they can string out some few sentences, they feel they are on top of the world, and they know next to nothing. They are too proud. Without understanding, covenant breakers, Without natural affection, implacable, that means you cannot plead with them. That what please does not get into their ear. And then it says unmerciful, no, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same. But have pleasure in them that do them. We're going to sweep all those things away from our lives. 
Because those are the things that brought fear into our lives. And the fear that came also brought sickness. Also brought calamity. Also brought Satan doing whatever I wanted to do in many people's lives. But praise the Lord, Jesus was born. And when Jesus was born, the people I told, they were still lamenting. How long are we going to keep on crying? How long are we going to keep on suffering? When are we going to be delivered from this? When are we going to be free from this? And all of a sudden, Jesus came. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, will not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus was born. And then the angel came. And back to Luke chapter 2. In verse 9. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord came, shone round about them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Good news from heaven. You don't need to be afraid anymore. Afraid of the judgment of God. Afraid of the consequence of sin. Because when God forgives your sin, He will take the consequence of sin away. Great news, good news. Good tidings of great joy. And it says, which shall be to all people. You see, that cuts across all denominations. You see, there are some people that think when you are talking of salvation, you are talking of forgiveness. Oh, they say that belongs to the evangelical churches. But you see, we are, then they mention the name of their church. And we don't talk about salvation. We don't talk about the grace of God. We don't talk about evangelism. And so they will, they will exclude themselves from the great joy and from the great salvation of the Lord. Other people say we're too old. In fact, it's the people that are old that need this good news most so that you will not die in sin, so that you will not go to hell. So that before you close your eyes in death, you will have been forgiven your sin. And there was joy and hope. You will die and then go to meet the Lord. Then you'll be able to say, your sins were forgiven. All your guilt have been taken away. You have become a child of God. Before you die, before you close your eyes. Other people say we're educated, we're so highly educated. And so we don't need this. Of course, I'm sure you know that the same water that illiterate people drink, educated people say have to drink that same water. I'm sure you know that the people that don't have any work, unemployed people, the same water they drink, employed people, rich people, wealthy people, politicians, they have to drink the same water too. I'm sure that you know that we all need it, whether we're young or we're old. Whether we're low or we're high. Whether we're employed or we're unemployed. Whether we go to church or we don't go to church. This is good news for all people. How many want to reject good news? Do you want to reject good news? I said you want to reject good news? How many people will accept good news? Coming from God. Coming upon your soul. 
And then he wants to forgive you. He wants to change your life. He wants to sweep away all these negative things that bring bad news in your life. I want good news. I said I want good news. I receive good news. I will not reject good news. Thank you. God bless you. You can put down your hands. And it shall be unto all people. Then he tells us in verse 11. For unto you is born this day. Unto you is born this day. In the city of David. A savior. A savior. A savior. If you have your Bible, you turn it to Matthew chapter 1. And you will see what the angel had declared unto Joseph. When he was talking to Joseph about the same Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. This is the Lord. This is the Redeemer. This is the Savior. You will call his name Jesus. Why do we call him Jesus? Because he will save his people from their sins. I'm going to tell you something that may shock you. If you refuse to be saved out of sin, you don't have any right to call Jesus. You call his name Jesus because, because he will save his people from their sins. If you go to church, if you go to church, and you hold on to your sin. And Jesus is saying, bring it out. I want to remove it out of your life. I want to save you. I want to cleanse you. I want to sweep it away from your life. I say, no, 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 no. I love the adultery. I love the fornication. I love the stealing. Don't take it away from me. If you hold on to sin, you don't have any right to call the name of Jesus. If you worship idols during the week, then on Sunday you come to church, then you are reading the Bible because they call you preacher. And you do not allow the Lord to take that idolatry from your life. You don't have the right to call that name Jesus. You have waistband of Jiju. You have the ring of Jiju. And you have the calabash of your Jiju under your bed at home. And then you are going about, maybe you are even telling other people, and you are talking about Jesus. If you have all those things, you don't have the right to call the name Jesus. If there is hatred in your heart, if there is malice in your heart, if there is wickedness in your life, if you are planning and thinking of doing evil, and the Lord is saying, I came to save you. I came to deliver you. I will say, no, 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 no. I want to keep my hatred and my malice and revenge and all the bad things I'm doing. You don't have any right to call that name Jesus. This is what the angel said. And she shall bring forth his son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. If you have not been saved from sin, you are not part of his people. If you are going to be a child of God, one of the people of God, say, Lord, I open up before you. Here are my sins. I've heard the good news. You came to save me from my sin. Then you empty yourself of those sins. 
you confess to the Lord all those sins. And then the Lord will take all the sins away. And with the blood is shed for you on the cross of Calvary. He will wash you. He will cleanse you. And then the name of Jesus will be sweet in your mouth. Because he has saved you from sin. He has taken those evil things away from you. And when you mention the name Jesus, Satan cannot say shut up. When you mention the name Jesus, your conscience will not condemn you. When you mention the name Jesus, the joy of the Lord will fill your heart. You will know you have a right. You will know that it's the joy of your life to mention the name Jesus. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And when he sends you away from your sin, he also saves you from the consequence of sin. If there's any sickness in your life, that's the result of sin, he will take the sickness away. There is fear in your life, he will take the fear away. There is any cause upon your life, he will take the cause away. Give me a good amen. But don't you understand what I've been telling you? That it is sin that brought sickness. Even if sickness is taken away one night, if you go back to sin, sickness will come again. If you want the sickness to be permanently taken away, then you must be sincere with the Lord and allow all the sin to be taken away. And I can assure you, because Jesus is still alive, when your sins are taken away, your sicknesses will be taken away. He will take the yoke of your life away. Do you know that Jesus went to that man? He opened his blind eyes. At the same time, the man jumped up and started walking. What's wrong with your hand? You cannot put your hands together. Praise the Lord. Well, we are in, uh, well, in Southern Africa. There's a country there they call Zambia. And there's an old man, 80 years of age. Everybody needs Jesus. Whether you are 8 or 18 or 80. This man was, this man had elephantiasis. Now, the, the legs was big as the leg of elephant. At the same time, he was blind. And then I came to announce to them that Jesus has come to town. Because God has a lot for you during this time. And you will not miss the blessing of God. So I said, now, if you are blind, I'm praying for you. And then I said, oh Lord, open their blind eyes. I didn't have to go to him where he was sitting. And you know that immediately, 80 year old man, old, old man, his blind eyes open like this. Because when you open your heart, and you open your life, to the watch of God. And your sins are forgiven. And your sins are taken away. All your sicknesses too will be taken away. That's the good news we are from the Lord. And that good news is coming to you today. You will receive the good news. And you will walk on the good news. And then do you know that those who have HIV AIDS. They've gone to the doctor. They have been tested. And they have been told, you have, this man was told in Zambia, you have about six months to live. And it was there when I went there to have a program. And I told them, be free from sin, then you'll be free from sickness. Because those two things are linked together. And you'll be free from fear. The fear of death, you'll be free. Because when God sets you free from sin, you're free from fear of death. 
And this man having HIV AIDS, I said, raise up your hand. Then we prayed. You know that that man was totally healed. <laughs> he went to the doctor and they tested him and they could not find any trace of HIV AIDS. Good news. You know, I've, I don't know whether you've had this before. A man that had, and they, you know, they shot him in the eye. And, and then he went to the hospital. They removed that eye. And then they put glass, plastic eye, artificial eye. When I went to their city, in South Africa, and I spoke about Jesus, I said, now, if you receive Jesus, he is a miracle worker. He will work miracle in your life. Do you know we prayed that Friday night? When he woke up on Saturday morning, his glass eye had become a real eye. And this man is still alive. And he's still seen out of that eye. Good news for you people here. I bring good news from heaven. Freedom from sin. Freedom from sickness. Freedom from satanic attack. Freedom from curse. Freedom from you. Freedom from poverty. January of a new year. Freedom coming to you. And a new life coming to you. Salvation coming to you. There is good news from heaven. I want to give you a chance. It's now your turn. If you want the good news to be a benefit unto you, good news, good news, good news from heaven. Every sin you ever committed in your life, Jesus is here to forgive you. After he has forgiven you, then whatever sickness you have, whatever calamity you have, whatever yoke you have, Whatever work of the devil you may have, it's bowed and eyes closed. This is a time of good news. If you reject it, you become unfortunate and lucky in your life. But, but the people who receive good news, they're the people the salvation will come to. They are the people the forgiveness will come to. They are the people the peace of mind will come to. They are the people that will enjoy the message of the angel. Fear not, I bring good tidings of great joy. Wherever you are, and you are accepting the good news, and you want the spiritual broom from the hand of the Lord, to sweep away, to sweep away all your sin, all your evil, all your wickedness, all your fornication, all your adultery, all your anger and fighting, all the violence in your life. You are asking the Lord tonight with that spiritual broom in the hand of Jesus. Lord, sweep away all the sins of my life while heads are bowed and eyes are closed. You are there, you want him to take your sin away. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. Be sincere. Don't be a hypocrite in the sight of the Almighty God. If you mean to go back to the scene after leaving here, drop your hand. If you don't have any mind to leave the scene by the grace of God, don't put up your hand. You're making a promise to the Lord. You're coming before the Lord. Lord, I want you to take the spiritual broom and sweep away. And sweep away. And sweep away. All the sins of my life. While you are standing there. 
Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. I receive good news. Tell the Lord, I receive good news. Fornication, bad news in my life. Adultery, bad news in my life. I don't worship, bad news in my life. The during and waste bank, bad news in my life. Anger and fighting, bad news in my life. All the malice and all the envy and jealousy, bad news in my life. Lord, I come to you today. Take my sins away. Father, in the name of Jesus, you sent me to bring good news to the sick. Good news to the sinner. Good news to those who are in captivity. And I've declared your word faithfully unto the people. Your miracle power will come upon them in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray celebration of miracle. Celebration of deliverance. Celebration of healing. Confirm it in Jesus' name. That swelling in your body there. The swelling in your tummy. The swelling in your neck. The swelling in your legs. Any part of your body. I command that swelling. Come out in Jesus' name. The tuberculosis. All the high blood pressure. All the cancer in the body of that individual. And they are near in the body of that individual. I pray right now. Miracle healing. Will come upon them right now. Heal them in Jesus name. That brain problem. That insanity. That madness. I command that satanic spirit. Come out in Jesus name. That, that insanity will vanish away. And you become totally normal in Jesus' name. All those who are paralyzed, that fellow paralyzed from your waist downwards, I pray that the mighty power of God will touch your waist, will touch your spine, will touch your legs. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. All the withered hands, all the paralyzed hands, all the stroke, I command you right now, get out in Jesus' name. Those who are deaf and dumb, Lord, I pray that deafness will vanish away, that dumbness will vanish away. Touch them with your miracle power in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes. Blindness cannot remain there now. Blindness cannot remain there. When I mention the name of Jesus, blindness must vanish away. You see it and take all your bandage. All your cataract. All your glaucoma. Sit and take your blindness away. I command those who are blind, open your eyes and see in Jesus' name. Touch them miraculously. Miracle everywhere. Healing everywhere. Strength for the weak everywhere. My left hand, my right hand side in front of me at the back. Miracle. Showers of miracle. Showers of healing. Pour it down in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you because I know it's done. I know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout, Amen.